Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how 3D Builder can be used to take a 2D image and turn it into a 3D object. I can think of two basic use cases for this. The first would be, say you have some artwork, a logo or something, and you want to convert it into an actual physical ink stamp or a seal of some kind. Then what you can do is you can take that 2D image import it into 3D Builder, not have to use any of the other shapes or tools. You don't have to manually recreate it. This tool will automatically convert it into a 3D object, and then you can 3D print it, whether it's with a local 3D printer or through a service. I'm not going to get into the 3D printing. That's actually beyond the scope of this video and this channel, but I just want to let you know that option is available in 3D Builder that you can take your image, turn it into a model, and then have it physically printed out via 3D printer. The second application would be more what we cover on this channel, and that is for game design, and that you can take the image, convert it to a 3D object, and then you export it as like an FBX or an OBJ or some other format that is compatible with game engines such as Unity and Unreal. So we're going to take a quick look at that. So let's go over to 3D Builder, and to use this tool, you need to be on the Insert tab. And then you need to click on add and then down here you see load image typically you'd click on load image the normal windows explorer will open up and you just navigate through your folders and files until you find the image that you want in this case though since i've already selected them they're showing up here in the recent history so i'm just going to click on this one here now in some ways this isn't a great example because it's only two colors and this is really designed to convert brightness and darkness two heights and this because I use just white and black you'll see those two extremes you just don't really really see the in-between ones so you definitely would want to experiment with other examples I just didn't want to make this video too long so I wanted to have something that starkly shows that so as you can see uh, the default setting we've got four methods the first one's contour you can see that you actually anything that was black has been completely removed and only the white remains. You can flip that, which I'll do in just a second, but you can see that that is totally gone. We can use the inverse tool here or the inverse setting and now it's to the opposite. Everything that, that was white is gone and everything is black is now the highest level. So clearly colors in between, which again we'll get to in a few minutes, would be somewhere in between. So if you had like a medium gray, it would maybe be like this height. If you had a light gray, it would maybe be this height. You'll see in, a, in another example. I just wanted to use this one because I think this is a good example for, like I said, if you're trying to make a physical object in the real world, such as a 3D, uh, such as a uh, an ink stamp or like a um, a seal or something like that. And then, in fact, there's a setting in here for stamps. So levels really don't matter for this particular option because this is how many colors are being used, but there's only two colors, black and white. Smoothness oddly works contradictory in this. I find that if you choose smoothness, it actually makes it look rougher. More, uh, You get a more sense of flat edges. I suspect it's because there's only two colors being used, but, con but smoothness works right um, on the other tools. Um, and then you can shut off textures as well. So that's contour. Height map, this is the one that I think that would be more applicable to game design, but I'll, I have another one for that. But you could easily take uh, an image and you could have using height map, it then turns it into, gives it like a surface, okay? And again, it's predicated upon lightness and darkness. So in this case, because inverse is on, the darker colors are the highest. As you can see, everywhere where there's black, it's highest. And where everywhere there's white, it's lowest. If there had been grays, the grays would be in here at different levels. And again, I've got an example to specifically demonstrate that. I just wanted to do the 3D print example first. And again, you can invert that so it's the opposite. So you have indentations. Again, depending on what you're looking for. And again, in this case, smoothness works as you'd expect it to because it creates these smooth transitions from one color and one height to another. Edge specifically emphasizes the edges. Uh, you can't really get a great sense of that in this one because of the smoothness, but if you make it less smooth, then you do have the sense of the edges. Again, it's not a very detailed uh, image, so it's hard to tell. 
but in this case you can see that you've got the edge around the eye and that the eye itself is indented so it is indeed a different approach than the other ones it's not identical and then stamp this is what i was mentioning for if you're trying to make a seal or an ink stamp you would use this option and what you would do is this one at least with this color set you would do inverse and now so this would get physically 3d printed so this is like your handheld part and then this is the part that would dip into the ink or the wax or whatever and now you have yourself a physical stamp whether it's an ink stamp or a seal and it's that easy and again you would then you you would click on import image it looks the same and then what you would do is you would then go to the services see how it says 3d print again i'm not going to get into that because i don't have a 3d printer and I, I don't have an account with any 3d services but you would take this you would print it and now you have an actual physical stamp that you could use in the real world okay so that is example number one now we're going to get an example number two and i think that does a better job of demonstrating how this calculates height so we'll just delete this click on add and again you would normally click on load image you would get the windows explorer but i've already selected this in the past so i can just click on this now again i think it's because i'm using so few colors that some of the tools act a little wonky so for levels this is how many colors are being used so you would think that as you increase the colors that there would be more but watch what happens it actually reduces reduces again but then when i go to max calls they all show up so i think that's kind of weird you would think it would progress in the same direction and then smoothness really isn't going to have any kind of effect on this and then inverse the one that wasn't showing is now showing okay so that's why you only see this one okay so now we would go to height map and this is really what i think will demonstrate how this tool is working as you can see each color is represented each one has a different height and you can see how these are fairly similar this and this and this the difference between them are fairly similar the difference between this and this is more extreme and so that's why that gap is greater because this is what i was saying it's using the brightness and the darkness to determine the height so what you could do i'm trying to remember if it's topography the type of maps that specifically use like borders like you'll use like circles and ovals and shapes like that and color to indicate height so that's kind of what you're doing here that with inverse off the lighter the color the higher it is so you would draw the image like say you may be trying to make a mountain okay you'd make the base of the mountain like maybe a dark dark green and then as you go up you make like a medium green and then a lighter green and then the snow covered top would be white well this would take that and it would have the lower part would be you know the darker green and progressively getting higher based on that snow top so that's the kind of approach you could take is that when you're drawing it you keep this in mind or you can do the opposite that you can have the darkest color be on the top and the lightest color be at the bottom so again i use black and white just to make this easy to differentiate but this could be again a, a, a forest green a deep green or a deep blue or a deep purple whatever you wanted to use you could do that and it, it so it's predicated upon lightness and darkness so I, I think that this really demonstrates this kind of underlying mechanic that you really don't have any control of that is how it's determining the height is predicated upon the absolute lightness and darkness not so much the color itself but again is it bright or is it dark and again just is it inverted or not uh, we can quickly go through these other two but this is the one that i really think would be useful for gamers um, and what you would do is you just click on import image and then you just export it as an obj or you can save it as whatever format 3d builder uses i don't recall offhand and then you can open it using 3d paint and then export it as a fbx that way so if you want obj you can export it directly if you want fbx you save it as its normal project file type 
and then open it with 3D Builder and then export. I don't understand why they don't just put FBX directly in this. It just doesn't make any sense to me that they... I don't think their intention was for you to use 3D Paint, but it's just odd that uh, they do that. That why not just give uh, FBX built right into this? I don't remember if I, I, I've tried to record this video a couple of times, but I don't know if I mentioned it in this one, but I don't think this is being worked on anymore. I don't think I've seen any updates in a while, so I wouldn't expect any more improvements. In fact, I believe it was recently announced that Microsoft is getting rid of the 3D objects folder. So for a while, they thought 3D was going to be the direction they were going in. Apparently, they're not. To the best of my knowledge, the tools will still be available. If it's not installed on your computer, you can download it from the Windows Store, Microsoft Store, whatever they're calling it now. And I think anything else I say at this point would really be redundant. Um, you know, you can go through the various methods. Obviously, this is emphasizing the edges, hence the name. Um, and then you have, again, the stamp. And uh, for this particular one, stamp doesn't really work great. So I think that's about it. So I hope you found this useful. I hope this was helpful. I don't think this is a new tool. I'm pretty sure this has been here for some time and I just never thought to try it. And now I'm glad I did. And now I've been able to present this to you and I hope that you have found this useful. If there's other features you'd like to see, just let me know and please enjoy the rest of your day.